everybody. Happy Wednesday. Can you believe that in just a few hours, it's going to be October? Or as we call it around this household, Rocktober? That's right. That's my wife, Jennifer, over there, checking to make sure things are hunky and dory at the same time. Hello, Jennifer. Hello. You doing all right? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Hal? I'm doing fine. Thank you for getting closer to the mic to talk. I'm going to turn the level up on this just a little bit so you can hear me a little bit better. D Faulkner 6366 says, hello, Hal. Happy Wednesday. And hi to Jennifer. Who else do we have here? Someone says, hey, Hal, Jennifer, how are you? And Mark, well, I'll tell you, we're doing just great. We're happy because we get to be here with you on a Wednesday. And in just one minute, in just 60 seconds, we will begin this Wednesday game in the middle of our week. That means we're we're over the hump at this point. We're past the second, uh, the middle point of Wednesday. So we're we're on the downslope. It's just smooth sailing from here on in. I hope that you the rest of your week isn't too jam packed, or unless you like to do a lot of stuff, then I hope it is jam packed. I hope you are stuffed to the gills. It is my quad's birthday tomorrow. Please shout me out, Madison V. Shout out to you. That's me looking down at a phone. That's what that sounds like, people. All right. We're just about ready to get started. Let's see if we have any more shout outs before then. Who else do we have? Owls. Hello to you. Sheld Wolf in Alaska. Thank you for playing. And as well, Emma's mom is here. Can we have one more shout out to Graham? Shout out to you, Graham. This game is dedicated to you. The time has come to say goodbye to September, so let's mark the occasion with your Wednesday edition of Swag Bucks Live, the mobile game show where you win money from the comfort of your phone. I'm your producer, Hal, welcoming the fall with open arms, a bunch of questions, and this grand prize. Yes, that's $1,000, and everyone who can correctly answer these 10 multiple-choice trivia questions about the various topics will split it. Even if you don't get a piece of that grand prize, don't worry, because after Q1, you will get one bonus SB for every question you get right. Remember, you do have to claim those SB at the end of the game so that they can be added to your account, unless, of course, you are a grand prize winner. Then, whatever bonuses you earn throughout the game, well, they get credited to you automatically, along with your share of the grand prize. Now that the stage has been set, and all the info has been shared... And the comments have been swiped away. There they go. Let's kick things off with your warm-up. Here is question number one. Complete this show title. Mr. Rogers, dinner, neighborhood, or bedtime? What beloved show has this title? For 33 years, Fred Rogers helped children learn simple things like where crayons are made to complex things like dealing with feelings on his show, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, and it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood for 97% of you. And for the 3% of you got out, would you rejoin? Could you rejoin? Won't you keep on on playing? Won't you please, please, won't, please, won't you keep on playing? Hello, neighbor. (laughs) All right, folks. We did have everybody who got out as rejoined. That amount of people, plus some, plus our stragglers, our lay people. Can you say straggler? That's good. All right. Let's move on to question number two. Worth one bonus SB if you get it right. Here it is. Who was the first person to fly solo and nonstop across the Atlantic Ocean? Was it Amelia Earhart, Chuck Yeager, or Charles Lindbergh? Who was the first one to do it? He was just a simple U.S. mail pilot until he made this trip in 1927. Then he won the Ortigue Prize for flying from New York to Paris. Charles Lindbergh is the person that I'm talking about. Charles Lindbergh, famously the first person to fly nonstop and solo across the Atlantic. 67% of you getting that one right. That's two-thirds of you, but that means one-third of you are gone and need to come back and rejoin. That's what needs to happen in this moment in time. And I see it happening right now. I see well over two-thirds of the people out right back in. That means we have over 20,600 of you still vying for a piece of our $1,000 grand prize. And this is a Wednesday. Wednesday, it is our second most difficult game. But that one, uh, 
that one I thought was a was pretty common knowledge, but Amelia Earhart also a very famous aviatrix. So I can understand why you might have answered that. We're going to move on, though, to question number three. It's worth one bonus SB if you get it right. Here it is. Which of these novels is considered to be gothic? Is it Dracula, How to Win Friends and Influence People, or The Babysitter's Club? Which of these is a gothic novel? Hmm, which could it be? Gothic novels are a subset of the horror genre that has a romantic European flair. The best-known gothic novel might just be Bram Stoker's Dracula. Ah, 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 ah. Turn into a bat. Fly away. 97% of you getting that one right. You didn't fall under the thrall of Count Dracula himself. You were able to put a stake in the heart of this question, defeat it, and move on to question number four. Which, by the way, I have for you right now. It's worth one bonus SP if you get it right. Here is your question. What is the most popular state bird in America? Is it the bald eagle, the western meadowlark, or the northern cardinal? Maybe you would know this one because your state bird is the correct answer. Who knows? These are all popular birds, especially in America, but only one is claimed as the state bird by seven different states. They're all in love with that northern cardinal. Northern cardinal is the answer. 48% of you getting that one right. Well done. Not an easy question. 47% going for bald eagle, which makes sense, but that's more symbolic of the country as a whole than the individual state bird of any individual state. I do not know. I assume, I think California is the condor. Is that right, Jennifer? You don't, we're not sure. We're not sure over here. Glad I didn't ask that question because I wouldn't have been able to get it right. But hey, I, I'll tell you what I think is right, is that over half of the people who got out on that have come right back in. Still over 15,000 of you vying for a piece of that $1,000 grand prize, and that ain't bad. The rest of you are saying, dear God, make me a bird so I can fly far, fly far away from here. But don't. Stay. Play for those bonus SB. We got a bunch of them for you. Kind of like the one bonus SB I have, if you can correctly answer question number five. Here it is. Where would you find the official world clock? Is it in Berlin, Germany, Greenwich, English, England, or Denver, Colorado? Where's the official world clock? If you ever listen to NPR late at night and BBC World News takes over with the... They always give the time in Greenwich Mean because that is where the official world clock lives. It's in Greenwich, England, people. 87% of you getting that one right. Well done. You're mean and lean and ready to be questioned for a trivia game. Doing really well. Moving on. Over 13,600 of you, and that number is rising because I have people rejoining of the 13% that got out, which I like to see. And I also see a bunch of people still sticking around, which is great as well because you know there are more bonus SB to be earned if you continue to play. Let's move on to question number six, worth one bonus SB if you get it right. Why was the first American roller coaster built? To test out a new transportation system, to distract sinners, or for the World Fair? Why did they make that roller coaster? Lamarcus Thompson opened the first American roller coaster on June 16th, 1884 in Coney Island. And its purpose was to distract sinners from local bars. Distract sinners, surprisingly enough, is the answer. And oh my goodness, my heart. Only 5% of you getting that one right. That means 95% of the people in grand prize contention just went and took that first drop on the roller coaster. But hey, you have rejoins. You have those free rejoins you got during Second Chance Week. Now's the time to break them out and use them if you haven't already done so this game. And I'm proud to report and happy to report that almost half of the people who got out on that one are coming right back in. In fact, we may even get there. We are over 6,500 and climbing of you who are in contention for the grand prize still. But this has been a tough one today. It's a tough one, but you continue to soldier on, and that is what I like to see because you know, as I said many times, as I continue to say every game, even when you're eliminated, there's still bonus SB for you to earn. So why not stick around and earn that? Why are you leaving money on the table? You wouldn't do that. You're too smart for it. Let's move on to question number seven. It's worth one bonus SB if you get it right. Here it is. What Oscar winner's first ever role was as the cowardly lion in a local play? Was it Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, or Tom Hanks? Which one of these men was king 
of the forest. <laughs> He's never replicated the role as a professional, but the role kind of fits him, and admit it. You would definitely pay to see Robert De Niro as the cowardly lion. Of course you would. 59% of you getting that one right. They're saying, are you, are you cowardly lion? He's going, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit cowardly. A little bit, maybe a little bit. But hey, I'll tell you what. 41% of you getting out. I don't like to see that, but I do like to see you sticking around, which of course you are. Let's move on to question number eight. It's worth one bonus SB if you get it right. Here it is. Which of the following is a citrus fruit? Is it a lemon, an apple, or a banana? Which of these is a citrus fruit? Typified by their thick rinds and juicy pulp, citrus fruit are grown in warm regions like Florida and out here in California where people have lemon trees in their backyards. Yes, you can just pick a lemon in your backyard. People will bring lemons into the office at work sometime when the office was open. 99% of you getting that one right, though. You know your citrus. Well done. Sorry for those of you who are expecting a banana, but it never is the banana, except when it is. Let's move on. To question number nine, our second to last question, one bonus SB will be yours if you can get it right. Here it is. How do you endorse a check? Do you shred it, mail it, or sign it? How do you endorse a check, my good friends? Whether you're depositing a check in the bank or just giving the money to someone else, you have to endorse that check first by signing the back. You have to sign it. Sign it is the answer. 3,815 of you have made it this far, and you are ready for our final question. Folks, I hope you've had fun playing this game. You know what to do if you had, and that is to tell your friends about it, to post to social media with the hashtag SBLive, and include your share link, of course, which you get by clicking the Get More Rejoins button in the main menu of this app. When people sign up using that link and enter the code that comes when you press that button, you will get a free rejoin. Now, folks, this is exciting. I don't know if you knew this, but tomorrow is the anniversary of Walt Disney World opening. And yeah, that's right. We're celebrating with a game about all things Disney. So join us for some magic at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Pacific Time. We will have $1,000 on the line. Oh, boy. Folks, I want you to, whoops, I want you to get powerful cleaning tools for an extraordinary clean and earn SB while you're doing it. How do you do it? Simple. Add Scotch-Brite to your list in the in-store deals area of swagbucks.com, then buy one eligible Scotch-Brite product at a participating retailer and earn 50 SB. Buy two and earn 125 SB. Buy three and earn, that's right, 600 SB. Now you have to be a U.S. player to qualify for this opportunity, but check it out after the game. If you're washing dishes as often as I am, Scotch-Brite is a lifesaver. And since you have to get it anyway, why not go to the participating retailer near you that will give you SB after you upload the receipt? It's so easy, so easy to get these in-store deals. Before you go shopping, just go there and check all the stuff that you want to get and earn SB for uploading the receipt after. Come on. Folks, 3,815 of you are vying for a piece of our $1,000 grand prize. Over 23000 total are in the game. All of you can earn one bonus SB if you correctly answer the final question of this Wednesday game. Question number 10, here it is. What does Warby Parker sell? Is it eyeglasses, cars, or shoes? What do you buy from WarbyParker.com? While they do have retail locations, Warby Parker made a name for themselves as an online merchant, selling prescription glasses and sunglasses. Eyeglasses is the answer. Either way, 3,561 of you knew that answer, and you are splitting our grand prize, each of you picking up 29 SB, plus the bonuses that you earned along the way. Priya, 2017, you are a winner. Congratulations, Smokey Lover. I hope that you are a trivia lover as well because you sure are good at Swagbucks Live and George H38. Just a few of the winners of the grand prize in this game. And those of you who are in bonus SB and claim them, I consider you as always to be winners as well. Now that you have all these SB, you know what to do with them. You redeem them for PayPal cash or gift cards to Amazon, Starbucks, Target, and hundreds of other places. Thank you for playing along, everyone. I'll be back tomorrow with a Disney game for you. This has been Swagbucks Live, and I will see 
you later.